previously on Sweet Bean a Mean. Hopefully, 2020 will do a lot more stuff, and I won't disappear on the face of the earth. Hope I don't fuck up this time. Bye. I'm back. I haven't done this in years! <laughs> Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Sweet Bean Amin Show. Wow, um, it's been three years and I feel bad about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make croquettes. Something simple, something easy, just you know, move back in and make sure everything works out. All right, first what you're gonna wanna do is get some potatoes. Uh, I wanna say about three pounds of potatoes. You're gonna wash them, wash them, make sure they're clean because you don't know what the farmer did to them with his sinful little hands. <laughs> clean, clean. All right, once you got that, you're gonna wanna peel, peel the frick out of him. Get a potato peeler, don't worry about it. Oh yeah, in case I didn't mention it before, these are Yukon Golds. Uh, make sure you get Yukon Golds, they just taste better. I mean, Idaho works too, but they're fucking, ugh. They're so plain and boring. You're better than that. Look at you. You made it. You made it this far. Voila, ba ba booey. Peeling potatoes suck, but a good thing you could do with the slices. You can honestly save them, make little hash browns. Make sure you wash them thoroughly. But I don't wanna. <laughs> now you want to put everything into a pot. No, that's stupid. I should cut them up. <clears throat> don't do that. Cut that out. Cut that. Now that all the potatoes are nice and skinned, you want to cut them up into small little pieces. I had the tool just for that. The smaller, the better, because they cook faster and they absorb the salt that we're gonna put in the water. Spoilers. I feel so powerful with this. Like, you feel, it's, it's inaccurate as fuck. It is the worst thing you can use for fine little chopping, but I feel like a man. <laughs> now that we got it all chopped up, put them in the pot. <laughs> this is literally on the spot. It's, it's easy, it's just a little starter video. Don't worry about it, I mean, don't worry about it, Benjamin. Okay, I won't. <laughs> By the way, that's Benjamin. He's holding the camera for me. He's a sweet little man and likes music. Yeah. Here's the link for him. Here. Do you have a link? Now we're gonna go over to the sink, fill this up with water, and then we're gonna let it boil for 15 minutes. Come here. Come, why don't you? Which one's your favorite? Um. Drain out just a little bit. Oh, yes. And then we go over to the pot. Give him a little bath. Oh, this is great. All right. Uh, if anything, always let it simmer. Put anything on top of it. It doesn't have to match. It cooks faster that way. Okay, thank you. Now, a croquet, you could just deep fry it, put it in panko, and it'd just be like, oh, it's a pain little potato ball. It'd be great at parties. Oh, your mom would love it. Nah, we're gonna be making three different versions. We're gonna be making a beef version with red pepper, a lot of Mexican spices as well. And we're gonna make a ground chicken version, a ginger chicken version, because I like ginger chicken. And honestly, it goes pretty well with potatoes. Or you could just shove it full of cheese and call it a day, you slob. This is something I learned from uh, watching Chef Jean Paul. If you guys ever see Chef Jean Paul, he's delightful French man. So what you're gonna do is you're going to stab, hold the blade, make sure you're not cutting. Then you're going to that, that, make a little Minecraft block, bing bong. Then you're gonna tick, stick it in. You should be able to pull the root right up, like that. <laughs> you can do it with the other side too. That way you don't have to lose onion. Just get rid of the part you don't need. I love you, Chef Jean Paul. Oh, it's like a little Pikmin. <laughs> it's not safe for you. This is really bad for you. Too. Yeah. Then you do a little slice like this. Just peel that first layer right off. Just peel it off. Like your first day at prom. So now we're just gonna focus on, on the cutting method. You hold your knife like this, like a pencil. You don't put your pinky up, you're gonna get tired with that. Just go down. And for an onion, it's super easy. It's already got lines. So what you can do is just do it soft. You can go bink, bunk, bunk, bunk. This is if you want thick like long lines. This is like burger style, if you just want to have them like this. We're gonna let the, we're gonna make these guys uh, diced. We're gonna make them really diced and small. 
So I'll show you another way how to cook these, how to, how to slice these. Child's play. Beak mode. Oh, big. So a good way to hold it is like this. And just guide the blade down. Make sure you don't make sure you don't cut your fingies. And just do it like this. Keep going down. You've all seen Babish. You know how you're doing. You see, they're all together now. They're not disgusting like that. You can just do this. Nice, 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 nice. And then whatever's here, you can just go bing bonk 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 bing bonk. Onion. Now, since we're doing two versions of uh, two different meats, we're gonna divide these up into, honestly, you just need one onion, but you can do more if you feel like you want more meat. Croquettes, they require just the smallest amount of meat inside of them, but oh lord, it's gonna be good. Want some? Eating that was a mistake, I'm crying. So for the beef and chicken one, you're gonna just wanna do, yeah, half an onion, honestly. And then make sure you page your gas bill because we're gonna be using three, to three stove tops at the same time. Oil! Honestly, you wanna use a fourth cup, no, not even a fourth cup. Two teaspoons, two teaspoons of oil. It was literally just a splash. Did I pay the gas bill? Then we're gonna let him saute for a little bit. And while we do that, let me get the spices out. I'm very prepared for this shoot. <laughs> All right, this one's gonna be for the, for the beef one. We're gonna use salt, yes! pepper, cumin, paprika, oregano. Honestly, you can add whatever you want to this too. It's just these primary things need to be there. So as these things simmer, get the big spoon that your mom used to hit you with. This one right here. And you know, you just keep an eye on them until they start to slowly turn brown. And in the meantime, let's start cutting this red pepper. So for the beef one, it's actually like red pepper is probably the sweetest one. You can use green if you want just a more milder taste, but oh my God, these things are different. I love them. And this is a big one. This is a big fatty. We can use it as a punching glove. Yeah. Truth lies in the heart of battle. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. That was extremely satisfying. <laughs> it really was. Look at it. It looks like so alien. It's like, it, it's like a, it's a Metroid. Oh, it is. Oh, it's the baby. Yeah. The baby. The baby. All right, just smack those peppers out. Woo, woo, woo. Now, yeah, just give it a little smack, like a little. You want to make these really small. This is a bit of an older pepper because I wanted it to ripen a bit. So it's going to be a little sweeter. You can honestly also get the ones in the store that are just in cans, like like uh, can can fire roasted red peppers. Those are actually pretty good. I just wanted to show fresh. But if you're a baller on a budget, please, please go cheap with this. These also really go really well on a sandwich. Honestly, I think I might just do that. Put that on a turkey sandwich right now. So these things are starting to get nice and caramelized. You see that? It's already boiling, looking nice. You see all that scum? Get that scum out of there. It's like a soup. See, this is why I like Yukon Gold Potatoes because they honestly don't leave too much scum. If you clean them thoroughly enough, it's not you. You won't get you. Won't, you only get like a little bubble or two. And we all know the potato test. You get a fork, idiot! It's not done yet. <laughs> Stay there. Still got about five more minutes on that. See, it's it's to get in there. We put we put a little too little oil for the surface, so it's starting to crisp up a bit. But that's honestly not that bad. This one, however, the surface area is nice and still getting there. It's nice and slow. I put this on medium heat. And honestly, it's just gonna be judge of feeling. Do you like your onions more brown? Do you like them more more like the onion and eat it at the taste? It's up to you. But for this, I'm just gonna let it sit for a bit. This one is going to be our ginger chicken. Put these, put about half of these in there. These things, these ones don't really need that much cooking, but it's good to have them. Turning uh, this one off right now because look at that. That's nice and it's not caramelized, but it's nice and crispy a bit. We're gonna finish the cooking with the chicken. Gonna put this is about a pound of, a pound of lean ground beef. Gonna put that in there. With the meat, once you had your desired caramelization. There. Am I focused? Um, I don't know, man. I mean, if you're doing the rest of this, is autofocus. I'm gonna try to do an edit with uh, the anime lines here in the gun, gun, gun. <laughs> you just, you keep separating it until it's nice and brown. Or at least until, like, it doesn't clump together. That's the big thing with this meat. And now, it's time for the spices. About two teaspoons of salt. A little bit of black pepper, a little bit of, ah, uh, uh. Cumin! <laughs> it smells, so I love cumin, the taste of it, it's delicious, it smells like a dirty person to me. Like someone that hasn't showered in like three weeks. Oh, three teaspoons by the way. One or one and a half teaspoons of paprika, and honestly, two or three teaspoons of oregano. That's what gives it like that little smell, that little mmm, yummy yummy smell to it. 
All right, we're gonna let that simmer in a little bit, a little bit of a lower heat just so we don't dry it out. Always put the spoon on a paper towel, otherwise you get stains like this and that and that. Those are all me. <laughs> Let's check out the potatoes. Let's check how they're done. Oh, they're done. I can get that on. I put the fork in and it doesn't give any resistance. It's like a clean blade, like a sacrificial Mayan altar. A good way for croquettes to drain the potatoes is you want to, you're gonna wanna get a strainer and you want a big bowl. BRB, cookies like jazz. <laughs> I don't understand it. Exactly. This is hot. Uh, no! One last thing. Garlic. A lot of garlic. Garlic and onions, baby. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, baby. They're gonna take the potatoes over here. And maybe clean up, you f That's a potato ricer. You, want, you got coarse? You got fine. You got fine. So a potato rice, so you lock and load it like a gun. And then what you do, you just put the potatoes in here. And then... Uh -huh. Honestly, these things don't cost too much. This is a cheap one. This one only cost me like 10 bucks on Amazon. Mm. Oh, that's so smooth. Ah, oh, it's burning my hands. All right, so while we let that cool for a bit, let's get butter. So usually you want to use unsalted butter and taper for taste, add a little salt on top of there, but I don't know where my butter went. Nobody better lay a finger on my butter. So usually you want to use about half, half a stick. You're gonna, yeah, as much butter as you want, honestly. Half a stick, not that bad. So half a stick equates to about, yeah, this, that's about that. Or four teaspoons, four teaspoons of butter. Do it while it's hot too. Otherwise, it's not gonna melt. This is also a good method for mashed potatoes. You wanna put some, maybe some heavy whipping cream or maybe some like uh, milk or anything like that. For this, we want it to be a little dry so it doesn't explode in the fryer. So we're just gonna add butter just for flavor, texture, and taste. But oh, it's already so smooth. What I love to do with potatoes is put some pepper and some garlic powder. You can put whatever, however much you want. I usually put maybe like two teaspoons of garlic powder in there. You could use fresh garlic, but it's gonna be clumps and some people don't like that. And you could put the pepper. Also, people like putting white pepper. I don't like putting white pepper. I didn't know white pepper was a thing. You did it? No. It's a little zestier pepper, but it's usually used for like um, an aesthetic reason because people don't like seeing black clumps and things. Hey guys, did you know that 100% of you are not subscribed? Keep it that way. <laughs> there we go. Now we're gonna let this cool. So we got the potatoes chilling in the fridge right now just to help them cool a bit faster. But now we're gonna do it with the chicken. What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? You wanna use ground chicken, or you could ground it up yourself. It's mostly 70% breast and 30% uh, thighs. Just gonna put that in there. Then you wanna put in some garlic, put that there. And then we're gonna take it up, to, take it back to the stove real fast. Follow me, follow me. All right. Gonna wash my hands because I touched raw chicken with this. <laughs> Remember, always, 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 no matter if you're handling raw chicken, wear gloves, makes it easier, but also just wash your hands after it too. That stuff got salmonella. All right, now that we got it all mixed up, we we'll just, just wanna get it all nice and loose. Since it's chicken, it's a lot easier to just get it all mixed up and, easy, and uh, nice and loose. Anything ground, just make sure while it's cooking, it doesn't get clumped up. But while it's cooking, and at this level of heat, we're gonna add some things to it to make it nice nice and ginger and soy. What you're gonna need is a little bit of salt. I wanna say like uh, two like two teaspoons. You're not gonna use too much because the other stuff's gonna make it salty. Uh, more black pepper. Gonna add about three teaspoons of soy sauce. One teaspoon of, of sesame oil. Sesame oil is super strong. Just a little bit of that. I'll sprinkle some MSG. I wanna say like two teaspoons. Already comes with the soy, but a little bit goes a long way. It's just umami. Woo, mommy! <laughs> and then to make this really gingery, we're gonna add some ginger root. So you can use a shred, you can use a cheese shredder for this, but I like to use these little microplane things. They cost like $5. You can find them cheap anywhere. And you're just gonna grate it over this thing. So you're gonna go like this. I say use three knobs or four, or use the whole root if you want to. Depends on how gingery you want something. But yeah, look at all that injury paste, nice and easy, already there. It's gonna dissolve super well. It's gonna dissolve really well into this. And then you just mix it. 
Like I said, put as little or as much. And honestly, if you don't want fresh garlic, you can use garlic powder. It's not going to taste as like nice and moist and sit with the meat as well. But it's going to still, you know, have that garlicky taste. And just cook that until it's nice and done. Get us? But yeah, cook this down until like most of the liquid is done. And that's the thing too, if you already used up all your ginger roots, you can also use just ginger powder real fast. It's good for a pinch. If you're lazy like me. Honestly, this stuff, by the way, goes really well by itself. It just, you can just have it like this and just put it on a bed of rice or just put it into like a little, little slice of bread. Or just eat it like this. It's delicious. We're gonna add some green onions to this. Just wanna be tasty without it. Wash it a bit. And then we're just gonna cut into thin little strips once it's almost done cooking. Then you go bing, bong, bong. By the way, you can, these, these little white roots, they're still edible, they're just hard. It's just gonna take a while for them to cook. You wanna use the green stuff just for garnish, or if anything, they could just be used for, eh, you know, crunch, little texture, little flavor. Crunch it ties me, Captain. But they taste just like onions. Then we put that, and ba ba booey. And they're almost done cooking. I just let this cook for like five more minutes on medium low, just to simmer out all the juices. And now, it's time. Do you guys know how to make a dredging station? It's super easy. All you need is three mixing bowls. Put as much flour as you think you need. We're gonna need a lot. One bowl of flour and one bowl with some panko. And the middle bowl is just gonna be for your egg wash. Now eggs, egg wash is literally just what it sounds like. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? And for a uh, dredging station, depending on what you got, if you're making five croquettes, one egg's fine. If you're making like 10, uh, go, go in multiples of fives. Every five croquettes, just add an egg on top of it. We're gonna make like 15, so we're gonna use three eggs. And then with the egg wash, you can also use whisks or just get two chopsticks. Then you can just break the yolk and just mix it until nice and frothy. And to your dredge station, this is something that I do. We can add some pepper to the dredge just to give that, give, give the, the dough some flavor and a little bit of salt. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Dredge. <laughs> this is the one I'm talking, fresh ginger. This was a mistake. Now comes the fun part. <sighs> Ginger chicken, all nice and cooked. Put that right there. And we got our beef with red peppers and a little bit of garlic. I'm, I didn't eat today, okay? Don't give me that look, don't give me that look. So now that the potatoes are nice and cold. Ooh, that's cold, that's held, held. To make croquettes, you wanna just get like a nice little ball. Form it out into a little, a little, a little pancake like you're making tortillas. And you want to put whatever stuffing you have you have on in there. Like I said, just a little bit, because it's, otherwise it's going to be open packed. If you feel like you want to add more potato, you can just put it right there. Just roll it out into a nice little ball, croquette ball. I'm going to put these out in separate. We're going to make five of each. All right, we got all the croquettes made. We got beef. We got chicken. We got cheese. I don't know which is which because I didn't have the time to organize it. Also, I'm inept, but which the last thing you gotta do is fry them. You know what you need for that? Wok! You can use a deep fryer, but a wok is just perfect. It gets all the heat, it's placed out differently, and honestly, it's good for hitting. Come here. Now what you wanna do is fill it about halfway up anything. If you're doing this in a bowl or a deep fryer, never fill it up to the top. Because if it gets too high, it's going to bubble. It's going to catch on fire. You're going to have liability insurance to take care of anything. Then you want to put it on heat. And you want to get that going until it's about 3, 325, 3, uh, 335 degrees. We're getting there. We're getting there. This is good B-roll. Huh, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. We're good. Like a stork delivering the baby to a vat of oil. So if the oil is shallow, don't worry about it. Do not put more oil. Just let it sit right there until the other side gets nice and gold brown, then you flip it. And don't overcrowd it. Don't be that guy. The guy that fucking goes to a party saying, we're gonna bring like two people, brings his whole extended family. Don't be that guy. No one likes that guy. Jerry. Yes. Uh, oil flip. They're about done. <laughs> oh, I forgot, salt. Now that they're all golden brown and beautiful, just like you, you can put them on a rimmed baking sheet or drain it on some wet paper towels. While they're still hot, though, you're gonna wanna salt them. 
Salt. Oh, that's a croquette. So, we fried all the stuff. Now, we're gonna see what they look like on the inside. We got the beef. Ooh la la, mama mia. We got the chicken. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's the cheese, baby. <laughs> Holy shit. Now, this is TikTok material. Here. Give me the camera. Give me the camera. How, now, Ben, go for it. Good, huh? Get some good chip. But yeah, that's the croquettes. Anyway, yeah, it's super easy to make. And the fillings, honestly, you can fill it with anything you want. So there's no pressure. Just put cheese in there or just have some fried potatoes. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And yeah, just be safe. Anyway, this has been Benjamin Hello. Van Camp. Hi. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, shit, I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching. I know this video was a little low quality and a little blurry. I, I literally woke up that day and said, I'm going to record and thank God Gay Jag knew. Follow him on Twitter, by the way. Saved this video with his edits, so huge shout out to him. Give him a follow if you want. Also want to thank Ben Van Camp for helping me film on such short notice. I'm going to try to do more videos soon, maybe once a month. If you guys have any critiques, please drop them in the comment. I'd really appreciate it. Just want to make this show the best that it can be. And, um, yeah, sorry about the three and a half year lull. Haha, <laughs> oops. Well, um, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'm going to go play Street Fighter now. Hint, hint.